The subtle hues of Dennis Moss's grey buzzer have proved the undoing of even the wiliest of buzzer-feeding trout. It's a pattern that's equally effective on reservoirs and wild brown trout waters. Having fixed the hook securely in the vise, take the tying thread and run it on just behind the eye, locking the loose end in place with a few turns of thread before taking the scissors and trimming it off. Then just add a few more turns of thread. The breathing filaments are suggested by using a small bunch of soft white hackle fibres. So, so take the feather and tear a small bunch from the stem, then trim it to length and offer it up to the hook catching it in place so the tips project over the eye. Lock the hackle fibres in place with further close turns of thread to create a base for the thorax. Find copper wires used for the ribs, so take the length of copper wire and offer it up to the hook, catching it in place just behind the thorax position. Next, take the thread and wind it down the shank in close turns, locking the length of copper wire along the shank. Carry on winding the thread until it reaches a position slightly round the bend of the hook to give the finished body a curved profile. With a copper wire rib in place, take a, a browny grey Canada goose feather and select a few fibres. Five or six fibres are enough to give the body the correct thickness. Offer the fibres up to the hook and catch them in by the tips so with a couple of turns of thread. Then wind the thread back up the shank in evenly spaced turns until it reaches the thorax position. With the tying thread parked a short distance from the eye, take hold of the Canada Goose fibres and twist them gently to form a thin rope. Then wind the twisted fibres along the shank in touching turns to, to form a slim, slightly tapering body. Keep winding the fibres until they reach the tying thread. At that point, secure the waist ends of the Canada Goose fibres with the tying thread. And then, with a pair of scissors, just trim off those waist ends. Next, take hold of the copper wire and wind it over the body in the opposite spiral so that each turn of the copper wire crosses that of the Canada Goose fibres, locking them securely in place. Apply the rib in five evenly spaced turns before securing the loose end with thread just behind the breathers. Rather than cutting off the waist end of the copper wire, simply remove it by wiggling it back and forth until it fatigues. This little technique saves blunting a good pair of scissors. The thorax cover consists of a wider strip of the same Canada goose feather that was used for the body. So cut a strip and then offer it up to the hook and catch it in place immediately in front of the body. Peacock hurl is used for the actual thorax, so take a couple of strands and place them together, ensuring that the tips are level, if not just trim them to length, and then offer them two up to the hook and catch them in at exactly the same place as the thorax cover was caught in. Next, wind the hurls around the thread to help protect them, then twist them to form a rope and then wind the rope up to the base of the breathers to form a small thorax. Secure the waist ends of the hurls with a couple of turns of thread and then trim them away with a pair of scissors. Then draw the slip of Canada Goose over the top of the thorax and secure it in place just behind the breathers. Lift the feather fibres clear of the breathers. and then trim off the waist ends of the fibres as close as possible to the tying thread. Add a few more tight thread turns to secure the ends of the thorax cover, and then draw the breathers back away from the eye and apply a couple of turns directly behind the eye. Now cast off the thread with a three turn whip finish, drawing it tight before trimming off the loose end of thread with scissors. All that's left to do then is to take the scissors and trim the white hackle fibres to leave a short stub. 
And that's it complete. Dennis Moss's Grey Buzzer. <laughs>